Hey, what's up guys? Everybody? So, this is a popper update. Um, I'm going to try to go through things really fast here, but I kind of want to give you an idea of where we're going. Um, I will try to respond to some of my YouTube comments. I appreciate all those comments. Um, there's like a bazillion of them, so it'll take me a really long time. Lights are flickering a really long time to uh, get back to you, but I'll try my best. Um, so, one guy did mention that uh, this isn't really a sprint, and uh, it's more... Uh, uh, more of a uh, a marathon. So I've been sprinting to this point. Now it's going to be more of a marathon. Uh, my time will go kind of okay. Last week I had a lot of time and I did not sleep like at all. I got a lot done. That's okay. But uh, the next coming week and two, uh, it's going to be a little slow. So I only have like one or two days of time where I can really come out here and experiment. It takes me half an hour to roll a cylinder around just to energize, just get the gases in this thing. Um, a gentleman asked me uh, about this popper kit, and uh, I would like to talk about it really quickly. Um, well, a few people asked me, but w one gentleman asked me uh, a question before I forget what it is. He, he basically asked me um, the, the quality of the documentation, even though I cannot show it to you. There it is. But, um, you know, you guys went and voted. Oh, let me answer that question first. The quality of this... Um, Let's put it this way. I definitely think there's a lot of questions unanswered within this packet. Um, so the quality of the the information within it doesn't really give me enough information to really go from point A to point B with no questions. I have quite a few questions. Um, and a supposedly intelligentsia will answer those. So I will send John or somebody an email and they should respond with those answers. Um, so it's it's so-so. Um, it's not really, it's uh, It's not the best, I'll put it that way. Um, I, I would say there'd be much, 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 much better presentation of information and, uh, and, and functionality here, but that's what I'm telling you. Now, uh, I have everybody went to a poll, okay, and, and, and I basically neglected what the poll told me. You guys said, hey, get your money back, don't worry about it. And... <clears throat> I kind of thought about it for a while and I decided to go ahead and keep the kit anyway. We already got it, it's already here, we already fought for it, whatever, it's finally here and we have the gases, that's the other thing, we have the gases to test it uh, and there's a gentleman willing to, uh, and I still could not find his information, I gotta look up his email, send him an email, He uh, or send me another one if you, if you watch this, but uh, he's willing to uh, pitch in some effort on making some of the parts and uh, for, for cheap or minimum, minimum cost, so I, I appreciate that. So really the popper kit um, is really kind of out of my hands as far as getting it done, getting it built, putting it together, and then I will put it together, assemble it, and then we'll give it a test. Like, it's simple as that. And then we'll know or not whether or not this works. I really have faith that we can get this done before the December 11th show so that we can see, does this work or does it not work? Um, that's the reason I did that. Um, so I appreciate the uh, the audience participation, and I uh, if I do another poll, don't let that discourage you from going and voting. I really wanted to know what you guys thought. Um, it was kind of started out as a determining factor of what I was going to do, but then at the end, decided to do something different because I'm here to test this. We already have it. We have the gases. Volunteers are are, are helping to make this thing happen. So use the resources we have and try it out. That's what I think. So, um, yeah, don't let that discourage you if I ever ask for participation again because I really appreciate it. It lets me know that you guys are listening, pay attention, and uh, it lets me know how you guys think about what's going on here. That's good. I need the feedback. Um, really quickly, um, I wanted to show you what I've been doing. Like I said, this was a sprint to the, to the point where I just wanted to test it. Now, I wanted to say, hey, can I throw a bunch of energy into this device with those gases and get it to do something. That was my goal for the very first test. Okay, So the very first test wasn't, oh, this is either going to work or it's not. No, 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 you guys got it all wrong. I don't have any of the thorium or, or materials in the buckets. I don't have the coil on the outside. Now Bob has shown that you don't need the coil on the outside. The coil on the outside, in my opinion, is as actually helps create like a virtual cylinder and keep the gases in a particular structure so that it stays off the cylinder walls and this helps out from heating up the whole unit because it, it compresses everything and, and plasma is magnetic 
you can mess with it with magnetics. So being able to create like a virtual cylinder in there. Now one thing that a lot of people don't understand, there is on the original PAP engine, there are capacitors, homemade capacitors, wrapped around the coils that's the, on the cylinder. So if I'm not mistaken, you have, I believe the coil is first and then the capacitor, and there's two of them. There's three coils, one, two, and three on the cylinder, and then there is a smaller capacitor and a bigger capacitor. If you guys read the patents, you won't have questions. Um, there's a few people over at the forums that just keep asking questions and asking questions and making judgments, and it's like, until you get enough information to see what I've already done, you know, kind of hold back on your thoughts. Make sure you see what I've done so you don't repeat yourself because it gets a little exhausting. Um, I hate repeating myself over and over and over and over and over and over, and I know that the people who are paying attention probably don't really care to hear me repeat myself. Anyway, nonetheless, so make sure you read the patents. There's a lot of really good information in there that makes this whole process make sense. And again, the first test run on this thing is just solely for the purpose to see if I could dump a bunch of energy into it and see if I could get it to work. Now my conclusion right now is actually the fact that on this device the little bit of plasma that happens between the electrodes gives off just enough force to push this piston a certain amount of distance. So I am getting just a little gas ionization but I'm not getting the whole amount you know and if I gotta add the coils on the outside and I gotta do a bunch of stuff to get it to work and then reverse engineer that to see where we go that's fine like I'm not out to just prove that it works with or without the coil I'm here to uh, to test all the theories try to see what we come up with and show my results so I'm done just reporter and researcher together showing you what is going on um, I would like to give my buddy uh, John a thank you um, I did receive magnet wire this is a spool of 18 AWG and also a spool of 16 AWG and um, Peter did fund some of this and John actually um, was a very interesting email he sent me an email and he asked me about magnet wire and I told him I was waiting for, for an unknown reason didn't really know why I was holding off and I was and he sent me an email and he offered to do that so I'm like you know that is what I'm talking about. Things are supposed to work out when they're supposed to work out. So, John, I want to give you a thank you. And everyone else for feedback, informational, and just coming over and, and giving me a pat on the back. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Now, what I wanted to show was the RF. I did get time to hook this up, and I did kind of play with it, but I do not think it's accurate. So, for those of you out there who um, are into the um, radio frequency stuff, um, i got to ask a question, okay? My, my problem right now is I've got this CB, I do not have the amplifier, I've got this CB hooked up, and I want to run this over here. Now, before I got this popper kit, I used a uh, coaxial cable here. Um, I do not know where, oh, here's the, here's the wire. Okay, this is what the insulator looks like on this. It's real thick stuff. Some sort of a, uh, I think it's made out of the same material as this, some sort of a Teflon, I believe. And, um... This was a mock-up that I bent to see if it would fit in there right. Then I just took a compression fitting, just like the rest of them, and compressed down onto this uh, plastic material. And it works really well. It does. It is sealed. And um, the, the reason I use coaxial cable, especially this, because this stuff is super, super thick. It's a 10 gauge. And um, it stays really stiff. It is really hard to bend. And I figured it would work really, really, really well for this application. So what I did is I peeled it back and uh, put it in there and I got it all bent up and I'll show you. Actually, I can do that right now. I want to show you this brown stuff that's coming off my gases too. Check it out. It's like a, it's like a golden, golden brown color. So I'm getting, I'm getting some sort of a reaction there. Something's happening. Um, so there's the antenna and I've got it half arced. Um, the reason I got it half arced, I think if you arc it all the way around, um, it won't resonate correctly in there. I think it will actually be better if it's like it is. Uh, check that out. The aluminum is not changing colors, but the steel gets an oxidation color on there. Isn't that weird? The, uh, the tungsten electrode here, I don't know if that's because I was doing this in air, but look how that point starting to burn away and actually build up material on the tip very strange but I think that's because I've been doing it in air 
and um, when you put the ga inert gases in there, um, the reaction is different, and you do not have a chemical change in elements and, and in the everything going on. Where if you have air, you get a bunch of weird stuff going on. So I think that's the reason that electrode looks like it looks. Um, anyway, back to the RF. So you can see how I've got it in there, and uh, the copper actually is starting to turn colors, oxidizing or something very weird with the gases that's in there. Um, so that's what that looks like, all right. And like I said, I've got the shield grounded to my unit. Now my question for you radio guys out there, I need some help. I asked a few people, not really getting the answers I'm looking for. So I've got this CB, and the only way I could find out uh, to, to, to make this work was to get some sort of a dummy load. Now, on the Intelligentry kit, you're supposed to ground this end of the wire to the head, okay? So basically it would be grounded to the to the cylindrical head, um, just the end of it. And so in theory, that's just a dead short. So I'm, I'm quite confused right now. I really don't understand it, and uh, I've been looking into it, but you guys out there that can answer this question, please uh, uh, post it over at the forums. Don't shoot me an email. Post it over at the forums. Links will be in the description. And um, basically what I want to know, what I did here is I took some 2 watt resistors, 2 of them, 100 ohms, and put them in parallel. So I've got a 50 ohm load. Okay, And this 50 ohm load allows this radio not to blow out the finals in it. Okay, So basically I'm still radiating the frequency with on this core cable which runs over here and runs up into my cell. So this wire should still be resonating but it's not, it doesn't have the power potential across it. So there's no really reaction going inside the chamber in my opinion. Um, so that's what I've got. I've got a dummy load and it looks just like that. That's what I've got. But my problem is, is I wonder if I need to uh, to take the ground off here and put my dummy load right here so that this is fully energized and then has to short out through the whole entire unit back to the RF ground. Um, there isn't enough information in the Intelligentry Kit to answer that question. And so I'm looking for some help. As always, I tell everyone I cannot do this alone. And I'm looking for you guys' help. So please post it at the forums. Um, sometimes it takes me a day or two to get back with you. I apologize. But do post the information over at the forum. How can I take the RF signal and make it so I have full power into that little wire, into that antenna? Now, one thing I will tell you is I've got this 100-watt amplifier. And what I need you to remember is that I do plan on taking this 100-watt amplifier and sticking it where the CB is. So however however you engineer, however you tell me to think I should try this, and I did try a uh, a bullet what is it, bullion transformer? Probably saying that wrong. It's just a little transformer, it's a unbalanced to balance load. So I was gonna do something like that and couldn't really find enough information. So maybe somebody out there has something they could send to me that would do this application. I don't know. Do whatever you gotta do, but let me know. Um, so I really don't know how to do that. I really don't know exactly the proper way to do that. And instead of just researching it for three weeks, I thought I'd give you guys the opportunity to let me know. So you tell me, how, how can I get the RF signal through this and not cause a dead short and blow out my finals on my CV? Um, and then the other thing is, <clears throat> if I get a neon bulb, uh, what is it, NE2, and stick it on my antenna wire, I should see it glow. Is that accurate? That way I know that I have a signal going into my system. Now I did try it like this and uh, didn't really do anything, but I think that's because I got my dummy load here and I'm not really having a load here at all. Okay, so I think that's part of the problem. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I mentioned this, so I'll mention it again. Somebody asked me what does this look like in air. I think I did answer this. And whenever you fire this thing in air, regular air, it actually is more power. It pushes the piston harder. But the thing is, is that you have chemical processes going on, and the gas smells real bad, and and you, you burn up your electro or your uh, electrodes really quickly, and all sorts of weird stuff happens. But when you put the noble gases in there, you can do it over and over and over and over and over and over, and it's like nothing happens to the inside of your electrodes or 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 anything. It doesn't. Nothing really does anything. Um, <clears throat> I did wind a separate transformer. I've got a little bit thicker high voltage cable here. And, uh, well, actually, let's see if you can see it. Uh, can't see it. And, uh, and I've got some high voltage wire here. Now, these capacitors, 
I didn't do a lot of calculations in my other video, and I, I know that, um, because I did them pre-hand, beforehand, and uh, calculated all out. And I am within the range of what Bob is using, but my circuit's different, so it's not going to be the same. Um, and I'm not using, like I said, the radioactive materials. The whole entire thing is not the same as what Bob had. So that first initial test was just to see what happens. <clears throat> what happens if I dump a bunch of current across the spark gap with these gases in there? Obviously, they have a little bit of plasma going on, but you definitely need some more excitement of the energy. Anyway, uh, that's it. I'm going to let you go with that because this video is already getting really long. And like I said, the update videos will be slower. Now, I will be doing live presentations um, on the weekends. Um, it'll be a weird schedule for most of you normal people here in America, unless you're on third shift. Because um, it'll be like a Sunday night. And uh, it'll be around midnight. And it'll last until Monday morning. So that'll be my normal live show. Um, I'll be having a little bit more free time. I'm going to be doing some EPG testing, which I promised I would do. I haven't had the time yet. <clears throat> and uh, then I'll be testing this device with different variations with the RF, and, and uh, we'll see where we can go from there. Now, uh, getting a hold of these radioactive materials, uh, before we go on, if you would like to be um, informed of information of when I go live and what's going on, go to my website, rwgresearch.com. Up in the right-hand corner, over here, <clears throat> you will find that there will be a mailing subscription. Okay, If you'd like to be informed, I will send out notification emails. Um, and also, my um, Justin.tv account is um, RWG Research. That's it. That's my username. But, don't forget, go to my website and click on uh, Justin TV, I think it says. And then you click on a live link and it will bring up the other chat. The chat is not over at Justin TV. It's a browser window that we put on my website that was uh, um, all the guys helped me out do that and uh, Matt and uh, go there and subscribe to the mailing list check out the live view page so you know how it is and then you can you can watch live we'll do stuff live I'll have a little more time coming up and uh, I'll try my best to get as much as I can done but things are going to slow down a little bit because uh, it's just been a little crazy got to rest it's been crazy uh, that's it. More research to be done. Um, the results that I got were the expected results. Um, I was satisfied with the results that I got, but there's definitely a lot more going on here that we need to do. So that's it. Russ with RWGResearch.com. Appreciate you listening to me. Sorry it's just blah, 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 and talk, 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 but i got to give you those update videos. It's not always about uh, showing what I'm doing, but telling you what I'm doing, and you just have to listen to me. All right. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Coil former. I have here a uh, piece of PVC pipe. I don't even know what size it is. Two inch. Inside diameter? Four inch outside diameter. It fits exactly where I want it. So when I wrap it on here, I'll probably put some sort of a film on here and then I'll slide my coil off. And uh, then we can test out the coils. All right, RussellRWGResearch.com. Have a good day. You guys like spinning? We haven't spun in a really long time. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Keep posting videos. Peace and love to you all. God bless.